Manchester United were able to pull off a remarkable comeback victory that could momentarily minimise the pressure that surrounds them on and off the pitch. Just for the 3-2 victory against Nottingham Forest, the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Yes, Where do we start? There are so many things to speak about the club off the pitch, but we like to keep it as close as possible here. Mm -hmm. Days before kickoff, we find out about the Mason Mount and Luke Shaw injuries, which are massive setbacks already. And there's also been a lot of conversation about the strength and conditioning our players are required to participate in. Looking at the pre-season and the weird structuring of games, constant travelling, that wouldn't help. And obviously, just seeing the first three fixtures, you can tell that the team are not as sharp as you would hope to start the campaign. Mm -hmm. I will no. leave a link to the thread in the description that touches on the topic a little more and you can tell us what you think in the comments. Manchester United started in the worst possible way with two goals conceded before we even reached the five minute mark. Yeah. I mean, first getting countered from our own corner where we failed to win the ball three times as Taiwan Wanyi in red hot form charges through and gets the better of Onana. Then, a set piece given away leads to Willy Body being gifted a free header inside the box. Two defenders in front, but paying attention to the flight of the ball. At that point, you look at your TV screen or on the pitch and just think, from there, it's only going to get worse. The saving grace may have been the time at which we conceded. Nottingham Forest instantly went into protection mode, not applying any pressure on our players, dropping back and allowing the team to dominate possession. Some would say it's a smart strategy, as in the past we have really struggled in those scenarios, but thankfully those demons wouldn't come to rear their ugly heads. I think a massive difference that was noticed and appreciated by me at least, was Marcus Rashford being back out on the left hand side. Therefore, On numerous occasions, he looked to take on his defender and that led to our most successful moments, including Christian Eriksen getting us back in the game. Marcus dribbled towards the byline, left footed cross with pace across the ground as the Dane flicks the ball into the net. Just what we needed and just what the crowd needed as well. Casemiro also had an excellent chance to equalise a little less than 10 minutes after but somehow ended up missing the header which was right in front of goal by the way. Tried to be a little too precise perhaps with the header but even then it was a pretty bad miss. With us in control of the game that didn't mean on occasion Forrest wouldn't ask questions of our defence. The theme of our midfield open to exploitation has continued and as they countered through that or utilised the long ball, players like Morgan Gibbs-White and Serge Aurier were key orchestrators. They couldn't execute in the moments after and to be fair our defenders, they did a job when it came to last ditch tackles and clearances. Our equaliser in the second half was extremely well worked off the training ground and included three crucial components. Bruno starting off with a free kick, swings the ball into Rashford and at this moment you see the Forest defence kind of all starting to step up as Fernandez's movement off ball is superb, oh. faking a run in behind Brennan Johnson and as he slightly shifts to the left, acceleration, lovely clipped in pass by Marcus and a header towards the back post finds our Brazilian defensive master who makes amends for that first half shocker. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> it smiles all round. The crowd were back alive once again and we had a game on our hands. Things got even worse for our opponents when the captain Joe Worrell was dismissed after taking out Bruno and denying a clear goal scoring opportunity. Sweet pass by Casemiro over the top finds Bruno. Willy Body was close but I don't think he would have got there before Fernandes did. The free kick we received from that whole debacle didn't really take full advantage of it. It was kind of a little comical due to the lack of communication between Bruno and Diogo Delo and it ended up going for a goal kick. But 
a set piece and penalty to be exact didn't end up being our match winner slightly controversial for some as Rashford once again being direct taking on Danilo and as there was a little contact on the knee he goes down and wins his team a spot kick in which El Capitano stepped up and converted comeback officially complete did you think that Danilo's challenge was a foul let us know in the comments the media seem to speak about this one a lot more than the clear Shabozhalai dive that eventually led to Liverpool taking a 2-1 lead last game week against Bournemouth strange times we're living in this 22's view segment is all about you rhyming on the beat but anyway on twitter the youtube community tab we've asked you to have your say about the game and the same will be said about news we're gonna be covering in the next few united twins episodes so look out for that cm22 ent on twitter and the youtube community tab subscribe if you're new without a further ado let's see some comments Big up Surrealist United over on Twitter, saying was not the best performance from us, but the fact that we came back from that early sucker punch is somewhat of a positive. And definitely, you can see Eric Ten Hag after the game, he spoke about the character and, and the personality and perseverance it takes to come back from this. And we've seen this team under Eric Ten Hag specifically come back from those situations. It's just not great that we got there in the first place. So maybe that part needs to be improved. Hopefully it can be improved and, and eradicated from our game. For the most part, it does happen at times, but we shouldn't be starting games this poorly. Because if we don't start a game this poorly, we don't go 2-0 down. Shout out to Paxton once again saying, one, good comeback win. Two, the tactic is still a work in progress and many fans don't want it implemented really. Three, we had to get a pen, otherwise we would have drew the game. Four, striker situation needs looking at in detail. Two things I want to focus on. The second point, the tactic is still a work in progress. 100% agree with that. And even to this point, we still don't have, I would say, the personnel to execute the, everything that Eric Ten Hag is trying to do in near perfection. And it's hard to reach that perfection level. But that's just the reality of it. So as much as we want to see an improvement, and I, I'm still hoping that we do see a slight improvement yeah. with the current crop of players that we do have right now, the start of the season and all the circumstances that have weighed above us, it will take some time probably to get into it. And of course, the striker situation, which I may agree with Paxson in thinking it's a lot more complex because we've spoken about Rasmus Hoylun potentially coming in and improving and I do think he is gonna add a little bit more in that front line help out the wingers alongside of him but also we look at guys like Martial that have played there now Rashford has played through the middle and have looked isolated not just this season but in past campaigns as well and we think what do we need to do more to involve our strikers and, and get them just more active in the game because it feels like at times with our strikers they, they just left the dead up there. And how do we fix that issue? Let us know in the comments. Blessings to Wendy Grant over on Twitter. who really made some good points. Firstly saying, everyone looks exhausted, including the manager. As Jose Mourinho once said that a player needs at least six weeks rest between seasons. With international duty, the first 13 that played almost every game got about three weeks and then crisscrossing the US for preseason didn't help. She also went on to say, when I saw the preseason schedule, I knew there was going to be exhaustion, even with private planes. Then you add the commercial responsibilities and there is no other team in the Premier League that has the commercial responsibilities that players at United have been once again some really good points speaking about the pre-season schedule the lack of break that our players have had obviously at needing to come back and prepare for the new season ahead i know the last few years in general the schedule's been completely out of whack the last campaign having a world cup in the winter didn't help at all and i think you saw this squad tire out just due to the fact that there were the same amount of players 
performing week in week out for this team at a high level and then some went off to play in the world cup and and then there's europe being in every single cup competition for the majority of our campaign 22 23 that doesn't help at all and then the pre-season going into that traveling to many different places media obligations everything it adds up and I'm sure that is part of the reason why we have started so slowly uh, and, and have looked very lackadaisical to start this 23-24 season. Shout out to Super Nick, who actually had a couple things to say here. Uh, so let me go to the very top. I may sound negative, but the body language, lack of energy and intent seems very familiar to past tenures. It could be the beginning of the end for this manager. I hope not because this distracts and delays the process of getting rid of the glazers now we have found ourselves in these vicious cycles in the past where there is always a scapegoat and i feel like it's very important for us fans to evolve the way our way of thinking as time progresses and this is one of them you know the blaming of the manager the blaming of the individual player that is apparently contributing to this entire team not being good enough. We need to look at things, uh, I would say, as a whole within the top. So that starts with the Glazers, the board, and then you have the team itself. And the team is the players, uh, the managers, the coaches. Everybody is involved in our success, in our failures. And we need to start looking at those things. Of course, you can criticize uh, little things that happen within a game and individuals will make mistakes. But as a whole, you win and lose as a team. You win and, and lose as a collective. You win trophies, you're successful, you're a failure as a collective. And right now, I think that is the next evolution in our way of thinking as a fan base. Super Nick also went on to say, but if things don't improve and a consistent identity isn't implemented, our team will continue to stutter. And with so many teams around us improving, we could face challenges to compete and improve on the progress we made last season. And 100% correct there. There are so many teams, your Chelsea's who are making a whole load of signings. Spurs were looking good early this season. Obviously, Manchester City and Arsenal, who were the two teams, going neck and neck for the majority of the campaign, going for that league title. Then you have Liverpool. Potentially, they could improve based off of a disappointing campaign last year as well. Not to mention there is your Newcastles, your Aston Villas. So many sides that are looking to really break through that barrier and test the, the means of, of where they could finish this season. After the game, there was a protest where fans stayed for, I believe, 60 minutes or as long as they possibly could inside of Old Trafford against the Glazer ownership. <laughs> who has brought utter despair and discontent, not just within the fan base, but reportedly also inside of the club. And that involves board decisions as well. We can only hope as time progresses that this sale process comes to something. Because right now, it would be easy to fear. We're coming to the end of a long summer that we believe will be a start of a new beginning. But instead, their negativity still looms above the aging Old Trafford. And my question is, how long until not just the men's team, but the entire club hits rock bottom as they continue to neglect every area possible? This has gone on for far too long now. With continuous lies and alibis over the last several years alone promising more and severely underachieving in those attempts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this week's United Twins episode. Let us know what you thought about all the topics covered today from the match, from the 22 view segments, and also the protests. Let us know what you think in the comments. 
we can look ahead to the Arsenal game now with them actually dropping points against Fulham this game week. Very interesting to see what happens, how we can bounce back and start a game better, hopefully, and not be the instigators of our own issues and how Arsenal will come into the game. Let's get some early score predictions in the comments as well. What do you think and how you think the game is going to pan out? But for now, please be sure to drop a like on the video subscribe if you're new share to your friends and frenemies and until the next time we'll see you lots in